Hi everybody, it's Anne. Welcome to Art on the Creek. We are in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and today we're going to review the Neocolor One. But I, okay, I've already opened them because I was so excited. I wanted to share these with you too. This is a very old set of Karen Dash Neocolor One. Um, I don't know what year they're from, but they feel very 1940 to 1960-ish. <laughs> and there are some really neat treasures in here. So you can see they last a very long time and these are still good. They've got a little bit of white leaching. That's the wax coming to the surface there. But you can see if you just scratch that right off, you're good to go. So we're going to play with the old ones. We're going to play with the new ones. And I am excited that you're here with me today in my studio. So let's go take a look at the Caran d'Ache Neocolor 1 and see what all they can do. Are you ready? <laughs> Here we go. Well, okay, so Neo Color 1. First of all, it is different than the Neo Color 2. The Neo Color 2s are water soluble crayons. They're very easy to blend, very effortless. I will put a, uh, a link to a couple of uh, uh, videos I did. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put them down in the description because I think they're all on the same Karen Dash playlist. And I will add these to that playlist as well. So you can see what the Neocolor 2s perform like. And also I have another video that I will put a card up here in the upper right hand corner for you. That one is going to talk about a different brand of water soluble pastels. Um, that's where I did uh, the Canals of Venice. I, I don't know if you guys remember that video, but I'll put that one up. So the thing about Neocolors, these are different than the Neocolor 2s. The Neocolor 2s are much more opaque they are very easy to blend. Uh, they blend with water. These are just a little bit transparent, but you can use these on just about any surface. Now, frankly, I'm pretty sure you could use the uh, water soluble ones on any surface. However, you know, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't last as long. For instance, you can use these on wood, on glass, on, uh, on uh, terracotta, um, gessoed substrates, you can use it just about anywhere. So these are a lot of fun. And I think what I want to do today is um, show you my favorite surface to use them on, which is really, really affordable. You guys are going to like this. These. It is the Canson Sand Grain Dry Mixed Media Paper. I love this stuff. When I got it, I think it may have been on sale, but one pad of paper, 40 sheets, was like five dollars and I think they're still under 10 so I'll link to um, to uh, Blick I think is where you can get these and I'll put links to everything in the description um, I'll link it on Amazon if I can a lot of times uh, the vendors on Amazon are uh, actually Blick selling their items on Amazon or uh, one of the other art vendors and they will match the price that they have on their website and if you're an Amazon Prime member of course you get free shipping and for those of you who don't know, the Amazon links on my channel will be affiliate links. So all of those kinds of things that you do, if you decide to go shopping on Amazon through any of my links, that will help to benefit Art on the Creek to continue to make videos like this for you. So I will thank you in advance for that. But anyway, this paper, I love it. Sand grain. It is very, very pebbly. Let me see if I can demonstrate that for you. Let me just get a pencil maybe. I'm not sure if this will work because I've never used just pencil on this. So let's experiment. You can definitely hear it. It's almost like a stippling paper. And yes, you can see that. Let me stand up and make sure that I've got that in the camera here where you can see. Do you see that beautiful pebbly texture? 
That is so fun to work with. And it gives you such a really neat tooth. You can use just about anything on this, on this paper. I really, really love it. Um, graphite pencil, erase as well. So there you go. Back to the beginning, I have a new sheet of paper that I'm happy, happy to use. And the paper is wonderfully thick. I think it's 90 pound, 98 pound, 160 grams. So it can handle a little bit of water and a little bit of solvent, which is what you're going to need if you're using the, the wax pastels. Now, the other thing you can use is heat. Uh, if you have a heat tool, one that's a little more substantial than the one that I usually use. Uh, I have a, gosh, is it Black & Decker? One, one like you get from the hardware store to do shrink wrap. I will get that out and I will show you that technique as well. But um, I like odorless turpentine and I put a little bit of it in here with a folded paper towel in there. Um, you wouldn't need to do that. But for me, that's just an easy way to clean it out because now I can, uh, when that is saturated and no longer clean um, from continuous dipping into the, the wax, you know, when I, when I blend the wax around and then put, the, put that brush in there, um, then I can uh, just throw out the little paper towel and it just kind of makes cleanup a little bit easier. These are just those little travel, uh, travel lotion bottles. I think I got this one at Target. You know what else would be really good for these? Are those little Bone Mama jam jars that are so popular um, for around Christmas time. I don't know if they're available worldwide, but they're the little jam that has the red and white checkered top. Those little jars, I save them for everything, but the real tiny ones, the sample size jars, are really nice for things like this. Whenever I run across a small jar or a small container, my, uh, my husband <laughs> says, ooh, this is a good one, do you wanna save it? And I'm kind of a family joke because I do get a kick out of jars and things like that. So um, yeah, if you, if you look in the nooks and crannies of my storage room, you'll see lots of little weird containers like this, but uh, yeah, I never throw anything out. I always try and reuse it, which is why I'm fascinated with packaging. So um, without further ado, we'll get into this here. We've got Gamsol and odorless mineral spirits. This is uh, just an artist paint thinner, and this is odorless turpentine. This is what I used on a test piece that I did. I wanted to try and do something in the style of Van Gogh, and I will show you that. It's on the other pad here. I will show you that in just a moment. What I think I wanna do first, though, is show you the product. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's put the older ones aside, and let me show you these. Let me scoot these out of the way. Okay, Karen Dash, Iconic Red Tin. This is a set of 30, and I will, um, I will tell you as uh, in the voiceover when I get to that how many they have in the color range and all that. On all of the, um, the Karen Dash products that I have seen recently, they include this little hexagonal color chart on the inside here, and they say to cut here to open it, so let's just try that. Oh yeah, that was easy. Okay, so they give you on the Karen Dash products these little hexagons to, uh, to swatch it out. And what's so nice about this is that it does give you a quick color ID and it fits inside here when you're done. You just cut this piece off and it will fit inside nicely. So let me put my glasses on. Um, they do a lot of products. They have gouache, they have paints, they have pencils, they have uh, watercolor pencils, all kinds of things. Uh, including pencils, pastels, fiber-tipped pens, and paints. The wide range of water-soluble and permanent products from Karen Dash accompanies artists and lovers of color through every stage of their artistic development. These nine creative tools offer you infinite possibilities to draw, color, shade, overlay, watercolor, and paint. It is amazing what you can do with Karen Dash products, and I would agree, Karen Dash is a wonderful, wonderful company. They've been around for uh, over 100 years. And um, I've never had a product from them that I don't like. Now, Karen Dash is known for their quality and these are certainly no exception whatsoever. They're, these are really, you're going to get a really good, good product here. Uh, like I said, you can apply it to a lot of different surfaces, wood, ceramic, stone. They do have excellent light fastness and there are 50 colors. Uh, they have a high concentration of extra fine pigments and they're also sold open stock. So that's really helpful if you just wanna try a couple. Their watercolor pencils are another thing that uh, 
that I mentioned that they have, I really like them. They have a little bit of a graphite tint to them, though, at least the ones that I have do. Uh, let's see, one of their, is, is this a Karen Dash? Yeah. When I, uh, I work with them, they are water soluble. They might be water soluble graphite. I'm not too familiar with, uh, with them in general, but this, for instance, this is Carmine Lake. And I want to bring it out because they're a good product to use to do your initial sketch. Either that or one of these, uh, an all pencil by Stabilo. They work on glass, metal, plastic, and they're water soluble. And I really like these because if you're going to be doing something, let's say if you want to color some rocks with the kids or yourself, <laughs> or if you want to decorate a clay pot, that's the thing that's neat about the Karen Dash one is that it will be uh, it will be permanent because it is uh, wax based just like colored pencil so when you're using this medium think of colored pencil it's like colored pencil in a crayon form so they're not really soft pastels or um, excuse me they're not really hard pastels because they're not quite like oil paint that's kind of where i would push the the pastels over into that oil paint column these are more of a wax based pigment stick and I would put them with any crayon that you would use um, or colored pencil that is a wax-based colored pencil. So without any further ado, let's open them up now. Like I said, I've already opened them, so it's not going to look super pristine and new. But I will show you when I opened it, um, I did have a little bit of uh, powder up here from one of these that apparently had bumped the top. Now. I will get one out here that I didn't use so that you can see what they look like when they're brand new. So they say Karen Dash, new color one, Genève, made in Switzerland. Permanent wax pastel is, is what they call them. Um, and then the color is uh, citron yellow, lemon yellow, and they're made in Switzerland. They do have these arrows are for ease of peeling. And let me show you how that works. So when you get down to a certain point, you know, and you get to the paper. And what I like about this, look at that close color match of the paper with the wax itself. So you can really tell what color you're going to get. These are true to what you see, and that is good to know. So let's see, let me peel this off here. It's usually kind of perforated and very easy to peel, but of course, because I'm demonstrating it to you, here we go, there it is. So it just gives you a little bit of a head start, there we go, in the peeling, so that it's very easy to expose more surface. You can take the wrapper completely off if you want to. And the other thing that is great about these is that you can use a pencil extender. Now this one that I have here won't fit, it's not the right caliber, but um, Karen Dash does make one to go specifically with these, and it is a nine millimeter. That's what you're gonna wanna look for, is anything that has a nine millimeter caliber uh, barrel on the inside that will accommodate that. Then when you get down to these little pieces like this, and um, you will, they do break. Not in a frustrating way though, but they do break. Um, at any rate, you're gonna want a pencil extender sometimes, and Karen Dash does have you covered there. Now that little chip that broke off, what I like to do with my uh, Neocolor One is simply just save those pieces in a palette and then use them as if they were gouache. But here, um, I will do the same thing, only I will use turpentine, so that's, almost, it's a good size uh, pigment to hang on to, so don't feel that you have to throw it away. In fact, whenever you're working with any pigment stick, try to be frugal, try to save as much as you can. You can see this particular pencil extender I have here is not gonna work, um, and I'm measuring the wrong side, but I will tell you, <laughs> I'm measuring in inches, but actually it's millimeters that I want. It's nine millimeters in diameter, and uh, Karen Dash does make that pencil holder. I'll link to everything in the description. The one that I found on Amazon just at first glance was $28. That seems like an awful lot of money to me, so I will see if I can find a more affordable one for you there in case you wanted to get the pencil extender. Personally, I don't mind getting uh, messy with these. Of course, you could always wear latex gloves if that's something that bothers you. You don't want to get this on your hands. But the good news of this is you won't go through that feeling of getting the pastel chalk on your hands. It's really not that messy at all. It is very easy to use. These extenders that I have, I'll link to those also because they really do work well with Prismacolor colored pencils. Okay, so the crayon itself, when it's new, it measures 10.5 uh, centimeters. So really good size crayon, very long, easy to hold. 
even just by holding these, they have such a nice weight in your hand, you can really tell that you're holding a quality art supply. These are also very, very hard. They are not like anything else I've used with the exception of maybe a Crayola crayon. They are very much like that. Um, although you can tell when you first lay down color, the pigment in these is really, um, it really can't be beat. It's really very, very rich and thick and wonderful. In this particular set of 30, there is only one that is rated with good light fastness, five with very good, and the remainder are all excellent. So the other thing that comes with this set always, whenever you buy Karen Dash, that I have seen are these white stickers. I don't know if you can see that because it is white on white. So they give you, this is the sticker that they put in the gouache, the uh, yeah tube gouache or the pan gouache. And this one says Neocolor 1 and this one says Neocolor 2. And that is because with these red boxes, it's not the easiest to tell what is what. So I'm gonna take off the Neocolor 1 sticker and I'm going to put it right about there. That's good enough for me. You may put yours wherever the mood strikes you. If you have some dark notebooks or something and you just want to put a sticker on it, you can of course do that. And, and they're vinyl. If you want to put them on your water bottle, that would work too. So, okay, Karen Dish. I would leave this little piece of foam in here because it does keep them from knocking around. Now my, my ancient set here, this used to belong to my great aunt. We have a lot of artists in our family. Uh, this one, it looks like the size, I'm trying to find one that's the same. I don't really have one in here that's unused, but let's, let's imagine, shall we? The size is about the same as it used to be. Old one on the left, new one on the right, a little bit narrower on the left. And again, this white uh, leaching that's happening, that's the wax coming through to the surface. Just like when you have chocolate that is not, <laughs> not too uh, high quality chocolate, it will turn white over time. These I haven't used very much because they've got such sentimental value. Um, however, we're gonna, we're gonna play with them today and we're gonna see what we can find. Uh, so I'm gonna set these aside because I wanna swatch these out for you. Rather than swatch these on that insert that they provide, I'm gonna go ahead and swatch them on the paper that we're going to use today. So let me just set up a quick table here with space for names and a black line to show you the transparency. So the first thing we're gonna do is just swatch them out. And I'm just kinda, of, I'm pressing kinda of hard, but I wanna show you how they go down. Now this one, Obviously, I've used on some other things. i clean these off before I swatch them. Sorry about that. But that's a good portion of the yellow right there. And now, I get a, a rag here and I will just clean these off. Just like you do with a regular pastel. That's it. And you can clean it very easily. For the most part, I want to go quickly through this swatching, but I do want to get to the phthalo green because I want to tell you something. Phthalo green, this one in particular, just a heads up, is impossible to read. It's black ink on that uh, dark, dark phthalo green wrapper. So if they had done this one in white ink, I would have been a lot happier, but I figured it out. So no harm done. Let me read the color selection to you. Going back up to the beginning, we have lemon yellow, yellow, orange, salmon, vermilion, scarlet, carmine, pink, purple, and lilac. And then in the middle row, we have violet, periwinkle blue, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue hue, light blue, turquoise blue, yellow green, emerald green, phthalo green, Prussian blue. And then on the bottom row, we have dark olive, light olive, ochre, raw umber, russet, brown, black, gray, and light gray. And finally white, and this one I'm definitely going to have to clean off. So that is another tip I would have for, for you is to have a rag or some paper towels, sturdy paper towels um, like shop towels here. Uh, very handy so that you can clean these off uh, because they do kind of get mixed together when you're using them. I'll peel this off. 
there. There's the white. Okay, so here they are swatched out, and you can see there is some crumbling that comes up. The amount of sheen on the finish will be very similar to that of colored pencil. Very richly pigmented, and I recommend having a drafting brush or something similar nearby so that you can brush these crumbs into your trash can. And one of the pluses that I can tell you about that is that um, it doesn't leave a trail of, uh, of crumbs because you do kind of have to put some pressure down before you um, to get some color. I mean, you can get some pressure with some color with very light pressure, but just brushing it off, you will, you'll probably be successful. Let's see how much goodness I've got left in here. I'm going to just turn this little paper towel over to a clean side there. There's that. This is filled with the odorless turpentine. Um, you're going to want to use uh, some kind of a, um, a brush that is Taclon or um, something that is not going to hold too much water. Save your really good watercolor brushes for your watercolor. This is a totally different animal. So we're just going to loosen this pigment with the mineral spirits and you can see how it dissolves it and then you can spread it around. So yes, using a Taclon or a nylon filament is really going to be your best friend here and any shape brush will work. I just like to use the same kinds of brushes that I would use for gouache. Let me zoom in here on this purple so that you can see how this pigment dissolves. It becomes very uh, paint-like. And then you can spread it around. See that? And we'll continue blending through these here. It's very, very easy to do. Um, by dipping your brush back into that little vial, and since I have that towel in there on the bottom, I can also simultaneously clean my brush just a little bit so I won't contaminate going from color to color. So what I'm doing is I'm agitating the pigment itself and then pulling it around. So if you can kind of get your head around that mentality, they will be very, very easy for you to use indeed. A whole lot of fun. Let's try something here. This is this is one of the old ones. Let's just see how much they compare. It looks very, very similar. They may have changed the formulation a bit or over time it may be a little bit different, but look at that. Still rich, still pigmented. So now I'm intrigued because this set, this older set that I have, look how beautiful it is. 71 years old. The tin is heavier and it's a little bit thicker, um, but the product, I bet you it's the same. I, you know, of course I have no idea if it's the exact same formulation, but this gives me an idea. Let's compare. Let's see what we've got and let's see what's changed and what remained the same after all these years. Let's just swatch them out right below here and see what kind of color matches we can come up with. I mean, so far the colors are really holding very true. I ran into a little uh, confusion over there on the right with that, uh, the one that's on the end of the second row. I thought I was using Prussian blue, but I think I have a surprise. Two that are different. I got confused. I thought that the cobalt was actually Prussian blue, but it's not. I think that the original cobalt crayon, which I have here, is, uh, is broken. I think this one might actually be cobalt. Yeah, they call it cobalt blue. Um, whereas this one is a cobalt hue, and you can really see the difference there in between the pigmentation. Um, so yeah, I feel kind of fortunate to have this, this one. And uh, moral of the story, never throw your art supplies out. <laughs> Uh, this one here, the white, I, uh, when I picked it up, I got a big memory of using it for a resist project. So that's the other thing you can use these for because they are completely water resistant. The water does not stay on the wax at all. It just sits right on top as you would expect with any kind of water on wax. Uh, see, it just beads up and rolls right off. So that is uh, something fun to know that you can play with. Um, that's why they're permanent is because they do have that wax base to them. 
and you can use this on watercolor paper and then watercolor over it and create a really fun resist. So any of these will work for that way, uh, that technique as well. Uh, let's see here. This one is different. They've replaced it with a scarlet. And here in the older set, they call it, uh, where to go? Here it is. Uh, gray red. So instead of the scarlet, and so the gray red, we now gray red, we now have a scarlet in the set, and that's good. I really like scarlet, but this is a nice color too. I wonder if I can figure out what the pigmentation of these older ones are. Um, but that's a project for me for another day to do some research. I just wanted to show you that over the years, um, their formulation has remained true, their pigmentation has remained rich and dark, and um, they're a beautiful product. So time to play. Let me show you what I did yesterday. Now, before I show you this, I have to tell you, it is not meant to look like Van Gogh's self-portrait. This is just something, my interpretation of a style of that. So it's not, definitely not him, but the rich pigmentation that you can achieve in these is really delightful. And I think that they lend to this style very, very well. Now, of course, that's definitely not to say that you can't use these for finer detail work. Um, they'd be lovely for florals or botanicals. Really a versatile product. Now, I will get back to Van Gogh and our other project for today in just a moment. But what I want to show you, now this little swatching here will make sense at the end because um, I do show you another way to blend these. But I want to show you a scraffito technique that you can use these with. We're just using uh, layers of the color in a pretty heavy layer there, and now I'm going over it with black. So now this is the sand grain textured paper. You might want to use a smoother paper to do this with because it's a little bit hard to cover all of the tooth on this paper. But you have your first layer of crayon, and then you go over it with black. And then you're going to take something like an X-Acto knife or some kind of scraper, and look what you can do. You can scrape a design in, and I do have the sound off on this because the scraping kind of drives me crazy. <laughs> and it might bother some of you as well, but um, I don't do a lot of scraffito for that reason. I don't like the sound, but um, at any rate, it's uh, you're scratching in the design here, just like you can do with oil pastels or um, any other kind of uh, wax medium. This is really fun to do. Uh, you can uh, create any kind of design, any kind of writing, really have fun with it and uh, it will reveal the colors that you have underneath and I'll just kind of do some uh, broader scraping here so that you can really see that black come up and see the color that's left underneath. So scraffito is another really fun technique that you can do with these Neocolor ones. Let me just zoom in here so that you can see now this paper really does have quite a bit of texture on it. In fact I think you can just see even with it zoomed in you can see that pebbly texture so you might want to do this on something smoother, but look at how fun that is. So whatever layer you put down first is going to stay there, and then the layers on top of it will be the ones that get scraped away. And it does say that you can use it on glass, so I happen to have a glass jar here. So let's just grab uh, one, of the, one of the crayons here, and I will let you know what they look like on glass. Now they do come out very, very sheer when you use them on glass, but they stay put. Um, of course, they can be scratched off, or they could be um, taken off with, uh, with turpentine, which of course, if you make a mistake, you can definitely just take it right off of there. Or if you want to change a design, you can do that. Um, in the original leaflet, it suggests decorating lampshades with this. And I can imagine in 1952 that incandescent bulbs got very, very hot. And I can just picture someone's design melting, but <laughs> their lampshade design melting over the, over the, the hot bulb there. But uh, with today's LED light bulbs, Maybe you could do a lampshade, any kind of fabric. They work on so many different things. And then uh, let us I'll just show you here with these mineral spirits how it comes off. We'll just grab one of these Q-tips, dab it in there a little bit, and we'll just clean it off so easily. And just like that, you can just put it right back to the way it was. So fun for temporary decorations. If you wanted to decorate your windows for the holidays, that would be something that would be fun to do and you can clean the windows in the process <laughs> when you remove it, just like glass wax from when I was a kid. I don't know how many of you remember that, but my mom had a metal can of glass wax and we would use it to decorate the windows at Christmas time. Did you really think you would get through one of my videos without walking down memory lane? Come on guys, I can't not do it. 
Anyway, let's get back to Van Gogh and the Neocolor ones. This style, and I could, I just could go on layers on layers on layers, and in fact, I could still add more if I wanted to. I use an awful lot of mineral spirits on there, and you can see it, uh, you just have very little, very little uh, seep through. You do have some, but not quite, not a lot at all. And this is, it feels better than crayons. I mean, there's no, there's nothing here that is going to come up. There's a sheen to it, of course, because it is wax, but it's just so incredibly fun to use. And look at that vibrancy. That's really what I wanted to, uh, to see if we could do is really achieve that vibrant, uh, vibrant, uh, colors that Van Gogh achieved in his self-portrait and of course in his other art. So, um, so yeah, this was just playing around yesterday. So let's do something fun today. Let me see if I can find something for us to draw. We can do Alrighty, I've settled on this little fox here and uh, I think the drawing's just a little bit off, but you know what? We're gonna go with it because mainly I just want to show you how these work. Um, you can go in any order. You don't have to go darks first, lights first, whatever you want to do. I'm going to just start with this yellow ochre. And as I'm drawing this, um, I'll do it a little bit sped up. And we can get some uh, some voiceover in here. And I'll tell you about these uh, these products, what they cost, where you can find them, all that good stuff. Before we get into the finer details of these Karen Dash Neocolor One wax crayons, I do want to talk to you about memberships that are available on Art on the Creek. If something like this with this fox drawing here is going by just a little bit faster than you like and you really are thinking, gosh, I wish she'd go slower so that I could learn how to do this, well, you're in luck if a membership is something you want to consider because this will become a tutorial for my members on the membership platform in the weeks ahead. So if you're looking for something where you have a little bit extra, a little bit more opportunity to grow as an artist, to learn some new mediums, learn new techniques, really learn the details of how a piece of art goes from art supplies to paper to a frameable piece. <laughs> that is something that I can help you with as a member. Now, everything you do on this channel, just by watching my videos, giving it a like, subscribing, sharing the video, leaving a comment, all of that stuff, absolutely, that helps my channel to grow. And I will always continue to provide free content here on my channel. But if you're looking for a little bit more, if you're looking for a way to become a patron of my channel, or if you're really looking for a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, a little bit more content, a little bit more in-depth, and have a little bit more say in what kinds of videos get uh, you get to see, then a membership might be exactly what you're looking for. So I just wanted to interrupt myself there to, uh, to let you know that there is that opportunity. If you're interested, there is a join button just up under the video, or there is a link in the description that you can copy and paste onto your browser and learn more about all the different membership levels there and what they entail. Now, I do want to mention that at the Pikes Peak level, I do have a little description that is called Discounted Merchandise. I don't have a website for sale and I don't sell any of my artwork right now. But what that means is a lot of things like, for instance, this very Neo Color One set. I already have one that works perfectly well. So probably this Neo Color One set that I have used for this demonstration and review is going to be an item that you as a Pikes Peak member could receive for free. I will mail it to you. I'm working on uh, figuring out the ways of mailing these things out of the United States, and I don't think it's gonna be as big of a problem as I thought it was. So. Hopefully I'll be able to ship worldwide um, and I will take care of those costs for my members. That is something that I would definitely like to do because the last thing I want is an art supply that's just sitting around not getting used. And I know that a lot of you might be able to make some beautiful art with it. So I am very willing to share what I've got here and that I'm not using. And certainly this set is a duplicate. So I will definitely include this set in that information uh, or rather in that merchandise that is available. And I will announce those to my members only on my community tab when those items come up for grabs. So if that's something you're interested in, please remember that's one of the perks of being a Pikes Peak member. Uh, if something that you would like to do is just to give a little uh, donation to the channel, a one-time payment, or um, kind of think of it as buying me a coffee, something like that, then you might look for the button that says Super Thanks. That's a place where you can uh, securely donate just one time, and that money also will go directly to art supplies or technical equipment, which always helps me to continue to bring these kinds of things 
to you. Thank you for listening. Now let's talk just a little bit about what I'm doing here. I have gone in with a Taclon brush that's got a filbert end on it and now I'm kind of switching back and forth to a, a narrower round so you can see you really can get a lot of detail in. And I'm just blending out these layers. Now I will give you a huge tip when you're working with these. The more layers of wax that you have on, the easier it is to blend. You can soften the crayon up there with some of that uh, turpentine, which is what I've done, or you can paint with the, with the paintbrush. You can dip the paintbrush in the turpentine and then paint on the crayon and then use that to paint on your work. You won't get as big of a pigment payout as you will with the Neocolor 2s. Now, with those are water soluble and those really do have an intense payout. But with these, if you really go to town on the, the turpentine like I'm doing here, you can really create some beautiful painterly effects. You can really see how much turpentine I have there. And I've just got an awful lot of layers of the wax on and I'm really going kind of heavy with the turpentine. At the bottom of this video, I will provide you with links uh, uh, from where I purchased mine, but I'm going to encourage you to shop around. The links that I'll provide will be affiliate links, but I'm going to encourage you to really look around and see where you can find your best price. And it might actually be at a brick and mortar store. Uh, they come in different kinds of sets. Of course, you can get a box of 10, a box of 15, or what I have, the box of 30, or of course a box of 40. And they also have 10 metallics. So I didn't get any of the metallics, but that would be a really fun addition to get. Uh, the boxes of 10, uh, the conventional colors are $21.95. The box of, uh, why can't I read it? Sorry, the box of 15 is $34. The box of 30 is $68.25. Box of 40 is $99.50, and the box of 10 metallics is $25.25. They are sold individually, and for that, the best kind of uh, price barometer I think we can find is on the Blick website. So let me get there, and I will check that out for you. Now that I've got the Blick website open, I can see that all of the crayons, including the metallics, are sold individually, and that price for the individual crayons is $2.25. And I would encourage you to include their shop in, uh, in your price comparison because there is uh, a little bit of savings on those sets that I mentioned. The prices that I read off to you are from the Karen Dash website. So you are getting the full retail price there from that information. So all told on the Fox, I did end up spending about an hour working on him. Uh, and then to clean up, I highly recommend that you get some of this. It is the Master's Touch brush cleaner, and it's almost like saddle soap the way that it's packaged, you know, what you can use to clean your shoes with. But it is essential, and in fact, I think if you are an artist who uses brushes for anything at all, you really do need to have this. You're just going to take the brush that you've used and swipe it gently across the soap. You might want to get it just wet with a couple of drops of water first. And then what that will do is the soap is very fatty. It feels a lot, um, a lot like the really old-fashioned soaps that were made from uh, some kind of uh, fat. <laughs> and it cleans things so well, but it also conditions your brushes. It really will help you take very good care of your brushes. So I will definitely use this to clean up. And the great thing about that soap is you can also use it to get product off of your hands as well. Um, and I'm just going to clean off the white here because you know me, I can't stop fidgeting. I just want to keep going. I really love these crayons. They are just so fun. And I wish we had something called a feel a vision because I wish that you could reach into your TV or your phone or your, or your uh, iPad and feel this Fox because with the wax coating on this paper, it is just the neatest texture and it just adds another element to the art. Now, part of that is the texture or the paper that I'm using, and it does have such a rich texture. But if you've ever worked with colored pencil and uh, know that, uh, that look, that final look of that almost photographic glossiness, this kind of has those same characteristics, but yet on the chest of the fox, I think you can see how you can really achieve some wonderfully painterly effects like with oil paint. So this is nothing but fun, you guys. I'm so happy to show these to you. And you can see the I used all of those mineral spirits. It leaches to the back just a little bit, but it doesn't go through and ruin the next page. So part of that is due to the paper, but I just want you to feel that you can really use this product freely and safely, no matter how your studio is configured. 
as I'm doing all of these voiceovers, I almost feel like I should have divided this up into two reviews because there are so many things that this product can do. Uh, I'm just having so much fun with it here. And I did mention earlier how you can blend this with heat. Now, you'll, the kind of heat tool that you'll need to use is one that's a little more sturdy like this. This one can get pretty hot. This is a Wagner and I got this, ooh, I don't know how long ago, I don't know if they still make it, but um, for when people make gift bags and then they seal them in cellophane and they use a the heat to uh, kind of shrink wrap that, that cellophane. That's exactly what this uh, heat tool is used for. You can also use it to uh, for those embossing inks, things like that. But it's a little bit hot for drying uh, watercolors. So that's why I use the other one um, more often for that. But this one is really perfect for blending these wax pastels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the heat on. And what it does is it changes the sheen of the wax and you can really see it happening. I don't know if you can catch it here on camera and I don't have a lot of pigment down, but what it does is it changes the sheen of that wax just enough so that you can really blend it. Now, of course, the more pigment you have down, the easier it's going to be to blend. And you want to be careful and really keep this heat tool moving as much as you can because you don't want it to uh, burn your paper. I have had that happen and um, it's kind of scary. So <laughs> just make sure that uh, you're using it in a safe manner. And if you are working with children, maybe this uh, little part of the job here would be best left for the adults. So blending this is really quite easy to do as long as you're using the heat. I actually prefer using the turpentine or the odorless mineral spirits. You can also use Gamsol, anything like that. Just play around with it and uh, find what works best for you. And uh, you can really enjoy these Neocolor One pastels in a lot of different ways. Well guys, we've come to the end. Thank you so much for hanging out with me this long. I know that this video was a little bit longer than usual, but these are really workhorses and I just wanted to give you a fair view of everything that they can do. And I bet I haven't even scratched the surface. I bet they can do a whole lot more than what I've shown you. So take care everyone. I hope you have a wonderfully creative week and we will see you next time. Until then guys, bye now.